14 kilometers north of northern Morocco, you will find the UK overseas territory of Gibraltar. Sitting rock bottom of southern Spain, you will find a giant rock, known as the Rock of Gibraltar, the most dominating characteristic of this territory. But why on earth does the UK own this piece of land within the southern Iberian Peninsula, and what is life like there? Well, it all started back in 1704 during the War of the Spanish Succession, where an Anglo-Dutch fleet captured the region of Gibraltar. Nine years later, the Spanish officially ceded the region to the British. Today, it has its own government and is self-governing in most aspects, although the UK is responsible for its defence and foreign affairs. The name Gibraltar is actually Arabic and comes from an 8th century military leader named Tariq ibn Ziyad, which then gave Jabal Tariq, which means Mountain of Tariq. You can kind of see where the name Gibraltar came from, from Jabal Tariq. Sort of similar sounding, right? Over the years, Gibraltar has remained a continuous issue between the UK and Spain. Spain asserts a territorial claim over Gibraltar and has occasionally sought its return. But the people of Gibraltar have consistently expressed their desire to remain under British rule. The most recent referendum held in Gibraltar in 2002 showed an overwhelming support to remain British, over 99%. However, during the referendum to vote whether to remain or leave the EU, an overwhelming 75% of the people of Gibraltar voted to remain. So when they woke up on the 23rd of June 2016, it's fair to say the people of this territory were not happy. Speaking of the people of Gibraltar, how many of them live there? So the territory has a population of around 33 to 34,000. Meaning if this territory was to break away from the UK and become its own nation, it would be the fifth least populated. It has a population ever so smaller than San Marino. At just 6.8 kilometers squared, the territory is tiny. Only two other countries are smaller in terms of land size, Monaco and Vatican City. This means that the population density of Gibraltar is around 3,400 people per kilometers squared. This makes it around 12 times more densely populated than the UK itself, and in fact makes it the fifth most densely populated place on Earth. English is the official language there, with schools and businesses primarily using it. Although, as you'd expect, a lot of people also speak Spanish. Interestingly, some people of Gibraltar also speak Llanito, which is a form of Andalusian Spanish mixed with words from English and other languages, such as Maltese, Portuguese and Italian. The GDP of Gibraltar is around £2.4 billion, giving a GDP per capita of around £72,000, which is actually extremely high, and in fact more than double of that of the UK's. However, this data is an estimate, so take it with a pinch of salt. Gibraltar actually has its own currency, the Gibraltar Pound or GIP, which is actually pegged to the British Pound, meaning one GIP equals one Great British Pound. The economy of Gibraltar mainly relies on the services sector, with tourism, finance and shipping being important. However, weirdly, online gambling is also a huge part of Gibraltar's economy, where an estimated 25% of its GDP comes from as well as around 3,500 people working within this sector. But why exactly? Why is this tiny territory so favourable for online gambling companies? Well, companies based in Gibraltar pay 10% corporation tax. On top of that, there's no capital gains tax or value added tax or VAT, which makes it an extremely attractive proposition to the companies that are based there with online businesses. Honestly, Gibraltar is starting to sound like a really good place to live, which takes us nicely to the next segment, their incredible climate. The climate, as you'd expect in the southern Iberian Peninsula, is super desirable. Winters are generally mild and summers are nice and hot. The highest temperature ever recorded in Gibraltar was 40.6 degrees Celsius, which is incrementally higher than the UK's highest of 40.3. 
But generally, apart from the Mediterranean weather, life is quite similar to that of the UK. The laws, monarchy, language and currency are all the same. Although something I found that was interesting is that in the UK, we drive on the left side of the road, but in Gibraltar, they drive on the right. This is probably because it's physically connected to Spain, who drives on the right also. It would be a bit chaotic if you were to cross the border and have to switch side of the road. So as mentioned earlier, the most dominating and iconic feature of this territory has to be the Big Old Rock, which at its highest point stands 426 metres tall, which is 100 metres taller than the Eiffel Tower. The rock is also famously home to around 300 Barbary macaws, which are the only known wild monkeys on the continent of Europe. The population of macaws in Africa is decreasing due to hunting and deforestation. However, in Gibraltar, their population is actually thriving and increasing, which isn't particularly great news for the locals who have to deal with their antics. But anyways, less monkeys and back to the big old rock, which was formed around 55 million years ago, when the African tectonic plate collided with the European plate. The inside of the rock is crisscrossed by a great and complex system of underground fortifications, known as the Great Siege Tunnels. This network of tunnels was created by the British in 1782, during the Great Siege of Gibraltar by the Spanish. After the siege, the fortifications were rebuilt and are now a tourist attraction. Gibraltar sits on no other than the Gibraltar Strait, which is a narrow strip of water that connects the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. It is located between the southern coast of Spain and the northern coast of Morocco in North Africa. This is one of the reasons why the UK absolutely does not want to give up Gibraltar, as this is one of the most important and busiest shipping channels in the world. It is about 14 kilometers wide at its narrowest point, making it a crucial passage for ships traveling between the Mediterranean and the rest of the world. The Gibraltar Strait is not only important for shipping and marine life, but also has political and economic significance. It serves as a gateway between Europe and Africa, and the surrounding countries rely on it for trade and tourism. With Gibraltar being an overseas territory, it doesn't really have a capital city. Some sources state that the capital is itself Gibraltar, but it is more generally accepted that West Side is its de facto capital. It lies between the western slopes of the Rock of Gibraltar and the eastern shores of the Bay of Gibraltar. In 2012, it was inhabited by around 26,000 people, around 78% of the territory's total population. Something interesting I spotted was that Gibraltar's life expectancy, especially for men, is rather low at 75 years, especially considering that it sits in the Mediterranean, which usually has an above average life expectancy. Now, for some reason, I had a bit of a hunch that perhaps smoking rates are high here, which would drive down that average life expectancy. A quick Google search, and yep, my instinctive thought was correct. Around 35% of adults smoke in Gibraltar, one of the highest in the world. So there we have it, the tiny but interesting UK territory of Gibraltar explained. If you love this sort of content, consider dropping a like, and if you love it, consider subscribing, as you can always unsubscribe whenever you like. So thank you very much for watching, and we will see you very soon in our next fascinating video.